and this plays one to five players and takes about 60 to 75 minutes to play. And this is an expansion for the game, the Artemis Project. And this is a Euro game where you're going to be putting out dice workers in order to take your actions. And the way that this game works is that each round you're going to be drawing an event card and the event card is going to specify a location. And the way that this comes into play is that you're going to be putting that event marker out on whichever location on the board that the card specifies. And then later in the round, you're going to be resolving those action spaces in a sequential order. And then whenever that action space with the event marker gets triggered, that event is going to occur and affect whatever players meet the criteria of that card. The players are each going to have their own player board to keep track of their resources and any upgrades as well as their worker dice. Each round, all players will roll their dice, and then they're going to take turns putting one die out on the board at a time. And there's a few different areas on the board where players can put their dice, and I think the thing that makes this game so good is the really clever way that the dice worker placement works. Because any place that grants resources, you're going to get resources equal to the number of pips on your die, but the dice with the lower value are going to get resolved first, and there's only a limited amount of resources for each round. So you could possibly get more resources by playing a higher die, but you're also taking a higher risk because everyone else will get their resources first and there might not be anything left by the time it gets to you. And I should probably mention the theme of this game because this one takes place on one of the moons of Jupiter where players are mining for resources and developing colonies with limited supplies and harsh conditions. There's also some action spaces on the board that work a little bit more traditionally but then there's also going to be some different tiles that will get mixed into the game on the side of the board and these will vary in the order that they come out from game to game. There's expedition cards where players can actually put multiple of their dice and the reason for that is because players are trying to have the highest overall value because there's two actions per card and whoever has the highest value is going to get first choice of those actions and whoever has second is going to get the second action and anyone below that doesn't get to use the action at all. There's also building cards that can grant players victory points as well as permanent special abilities and in order to put your dice on those you're trying to get the highest value but you want to have as low a value as possible because the value of your die is essentially acting as your bid so you want to put a value there that no one else is going to outbid you on but you also don't want to bid too high because you're actually going to have to pay that amount in resources and a higher value means that you're paying more for that building card. And I don't need to mention that the artwork for this one is incredible. But the two expansions that are going to be introduced in this campaign are going to be adding two major ways to change up the game. The first one is the Satellites expansion, which is going to offer some off-board locations that players can access in order to modify the action spaces on the main board. And then there's the Commander expansion, which is going to introduce a type of colonist that players can use to their advantage to upgrade or modify their dice or assist in endgame scoring. This is definitely one worth checking out and it is a game that already has a ton of reviews and content on it already and you can go out and play it yourself. All I hear is good things about this game and I think it's a ton of fun as well. And of course there's links in the description below.